Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the IdeaTech F90 Pro aka the Octopus Racing Drone. I wish they wouldn't give them daft names because I think it makes them a little bit gimmicky but yeah this is a brushless micro of course and the design feature with this one is that it is waterproof. Now it doesn't mention anywhere in the manual that it's waterproof but if you look on Gearbest website it's advertised as being able to fly in the rain and from what I have seen of this model that is all I would do. I wouldn't go submerging it in water or crashing it in ponds etc but it does look like it has got a waterproof coating all over it so the flight controller on-screen display and ESCs they are all built into the frame which looks to be fiberglass so there's definitely going to be a bit of weakness there and it does mean that if you crash and break something then the whole thing is written off pretty much but I don't know if that's going to come up on the camera you can see that there is a coating over all of the electronics here and yeah that I guess makes it semi waterproof but I wouldn't go and submerge it because well why would you want to anyways so let's take a look at some of these specs the motors they look to be unbranded but according to the manual they are 1104 8500 kV motors and then we have got the 2035 gem fan propellers now the propellers actually were not screwed in and I don't know if the idea is to use them without the screws. I've seen a few people using propellers now without these screws because the propeller fits on quite tight. But you are still able to move it around. So I like to screw them in because I think if the propeller starts slipping or anything like that, then you could be losing efficiency there with the punch. So this one has got somewhere in here the Al Hali S all-in-one ESCs it's got a built-in receiver the receiver is a PPM strangely FR Sky receiver in D8 mode so not S bus and then underneath here we have got the bind button here somewhere so there's the bind button and then we've got a bootloader button here as well and then underneath there somewhere is the IMU and flight controller. It's got a built-in on-screen display. It's a Omnibus F3 flight controller. And then we've got a 25 milliwatt 48 channel all-in-one camera up the top here somewhere. And then the antenna here, it just seems to be a bit of coax. So it's not a sleeve dipole, just a bit of coax. So I'll have to see what the reception is like. This one also comes with prop protectors. There is a bit of a problem with that though. Mine have come broken and I've seen other reviews as well where theirs have broken and I'm not sure if there's any replacement parts there. So I'm going to have to use some glue on that if I want to fly this one indoors. By the way, if you look at the manual, this is the manual that you get. It does reference that this is an indoor flyer. So yeah I think they could have had stronger prop protectors the fact that it's a dedicated indoor flyer but I'm interested in flying this one outdoors actually because it just constantly rains here at the moment so yeah I find that quite appealing although you are gonna get water on your camera there's no way around that and I'm gonna take all this apart in a minute to see if this is sealed now as this is just a normal all-in-one FPV camera, I can't imagine the lens is sealed here again. So it's just going to be for flying in the rain, I would imagine, rather than taking it to a pond and hoping it floats and submerging it, etc. Now it comes with Betaflight 3.17 installed on it, which is the latest at the date of this video here. It weighs 67 grams without a battery and 88 grams with a battery. And speaking of the battery, it's not proprietary because it's using a JST connector. But because we have this slot here, then you kind of have to get exactly the same battery in order for it to fit because it's sort of built around the electronics as well so this is a 2s 400 milliamp battery it doesn't mention the C rating but according to this here it is 30 C there so I'll have to see if I have any issues with it hopefully not it doesn't reference the beta flight setup in here it just shows you how to arm it so it does look like the modes are 
set up to have it arming on the rudder and then we have an AUX one I think it's angle horizon and then acro so I'm gonna change that to acro and I'm also gonna have an AUX two to arm it on a switch there's no buzzer on this one which I think again is a shame so I'll be using that command set small underscore angle equals 180 it means that it will arm no matter the angle so if it lands upside down or whatever in long grass you can just arm it and hopefully hear something coming from it there so other than that yeah I have set it up in beta flight binding was easy and I've changed a couple of things so it was set up to have motor stop on so I've turned that off it's just my preference there and I've changed the PIDs the PIDs look incredibly low I think like the P game was like 18 or something like that so I've messed around with the PIDs the rates were all strange as well so I've put my rates in that I like which is a super rate of 0.8 and then the RC rate of 1 with no expo in there also the angle was set to 70 degrees in angle mode I've changed that to 55 because that's just something that I prefer it does have LEDs underneath here and they are connected to the DIN they are set up to arm state so when you arm it they go from green to blue and then I have altered the on-screen display around to my liking as well because it didn't have the craft name on there so I've added that I've also altered the digital idle speed to 9% so that it eradicates any flip of death and I've also changed the ESC protocol as well it was set to one shot one two five but it supports D shot 600 so I've changed that too so let's take these screws out and see if the whole thing is waterproofed okay so I have taken all of the screws out here so let's take it apart and see what is inside so it does look like every component is coated with some kind of waterproofing that being said it seems to be thicker in places than others so again I'm just gonna say that I would not submerge this model in water but hopefully fingers crossed it's going to be fine in rain which is all I'm really interested in the waterproofing for so let's just take a look at what we've got component wise so we've got the antenna here of the receiver and that also appears to be coated or stuck in should I say with the coating so it was my plan to reroute this, but I think I'd have to disturb the coating in order to do that, so I don't think I'm going to do it. And then if you look here, we have some extended wires here going up to the camera. So it looks like here we've got video in and video out, and then voltage and ground. There. Now there is no buzzer, but there is... A pad for a buzzer so you can add one I think you'd have some room under here as well if you wanted to do that there so let's take a look at the camera so I actually have two more screws to undo here and then once you've undone those screws we have more screws to undo here as well so I can finally see what's going on with the camera and the camera again does seem to be completely coated now there is a coating here as well which I've had to break in order to take this apart so yeah definitely ruin the waterproofing on mine but yeah it looks like a normal all-in-one camera and we just have access to this back button here not the front button to change things like the NTSC and PAL and also the camera direction but that's fine so that lines up with that back button it's going to allow you to change the bands and the channels now we have these lights on the back though that tells you which band and channel that you are on but you probably aren't going to see that very well through here so yeah it would have been nice to be able to see that but I don't really change channels that much but yeah, it does look like they've thought about all of this waterproofing, which is good because there's a good chance it's going to be raining or spitting of rain when I fly it. 
So also in the box you aren't given a lot more stuff. We have a spare set of these gem fan propellers, but they are the purple kind. And then you're given a balance port charger. Now I find these aren't that great, so I'll be using my hobby grade charger as it's a JST connector there. But one thing I do like about this is it comes in this package here and it does fit in the box with the propellers on, so that's gonna be great for storage. Would you believe the one time that I'd be fine with it raining, it's actually stopped just about a minute ago. But that's life, isn't it? That's how it goes. Let's see how this one flies. It is blowing a gale though. I'm just doing this to check out the punch, really. It ain't bad at all. Yeah, that's not bad whatsoever. Pretty much similar to how any of the other models running these gem fans run with a 2S. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now it might not be raining now, which is actually good for the hat cam, but I'm definitely gonna be grabbing for this model because all it does is rain at the moment. Just getting pushed around by the wind. Doesn't seem to have any problems with drift and angle mode, which is gonna be good for indoors. Let's try some acro. It is quite daring in this wind doing this. One thing I find with models that have prop protectors, ducts, whatever you want to call them, is even in acro mode, I think because of the surface area, they sort of try to self-level themselves and they never fully feel dialed in when doing acro. So I'll have to see what it's like flying FPV. I've seen some people cut these protectors off and just fly it as an outdoor model as well because they break really easily and I bet getting spares for it isn't easy flies nice though even in this wind <laughs> Look how grey the clouds are. I don't know if that's going to come through on the camera. It looks like it should be raining, but then the sun's out. That is just typical, isn't it? So, I'm expecting maybe... four minute flight time. You can see those LEDs underneath really well. Wow, they're really bright. Yeah, really bright. Oh, it looks like they're changing color with the throttle look oh no that's the uh i think that might have been the battery dying oh it's all wet in the grass doesn't matter though does it <laughs> yeah i think that might have been the battery dying so no buzzer on this one that felt like quite a short flight to me and the battery was fully charged yeah that's completely gone the battery there so time to get the battery charged and do some fpv so I think expecting a four minute flight time out of this one was a little bit optimistic. In fact, it struggled to get a two minute flight time. And I think it's down to the battery that they have used because just watch the amount of voltage sag here. That's full throttle and it sags all the way down to five volts and that is starting from eight volts and that's a freshly charged battery. Now another indication that it was an issue with the battery is that when I landed, the battery was absolutely toasted it was really hot to the touch but the wires weren't hot and the battery was starting to puff as well so I think they might be fibbing on the C rating of the battery that's included with this one so we have that mount underneath and I was looking and it is just held on with sticky tape so you could pull that off and then I was looking at the side of the frame and there's a couple of holes where you could run a rubber band so I think that would be the solution for it because this combination is a fairly common combination it's not a particularly heavy model and this 
prop combination with these motors and the ESCs doesn't usually draw that many amps so I'm gonna put it down to the battery I would say that if you are interested in this one for its waterproof capabilities and its indoor capabilities then change out the battery get something that's ATC but there wasn't any flips of death I got a nice tune out of it as well so I'll give you my PIDs if you want to check that out a little bit more D than usual tend to find that you need that with these models that have got these prop protectors on didn't notice any problems with delay with this being a PPM receiver as well it just felt the same so that was good the picture quality pretty good and the reception as well the sun is on the horizon here so it struggles with the dynamic range a little bit but all of these CMOS cameras have that problem but yeah it was flying acro quite nicely and yeah just really a complaint with the battery in fact you can see there that it's cutting out and I think that's just the sag on the battery there just too low and it's starting to brown out etc but that's a problem with the battery anyway I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one and as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe cheers